Hi people, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karva and in this video, I'm going to address and answer the most frequently asked question, which is how much time should we devote for paper one and paper two preparation if we want to clear net in next four to five months. Now in this video, I'm going to address this question separately for paper one and then for paper two. And at the end, I'm going to give you three bonus tips. So watch this video till the end. But before I begin with paper one, I would like to tell you that the observations and the study technique that I'm going to talk about is based on my personal opinion. Uh, I have talked to more than 1000 students in past two years. And I am telling that on the basis of my experience and my interaction with these students. This might vary for you, depending upon your lifestyle, your speed of learning, and also depending upon how much prior preparation you have already done. If a person who has uh, studied for net from past two years, he might have to devote very less time in comparison to a person who is studying for the first time and who is going to give his first attempt. Similarly, if you are a person who takes a lot of time to understand things, for example, you might not be so good with reasoning or DI and you take a lot of time to understand those concepts to brush up upon the basics. In that case, you will have to give more time in that area. If a person is very good with theory, he might have to give less time in that area. So it depends upon a lot of factors, but I'm going to give you a generalized plan, which you have to change and tailor made according to your own requirement. So let's begin. Now, when it comes to paper one preparation, we simply know that there are 10 units. Now, the simple strategy that every student can follow is that you take one unit at a time. Suppose I took uh, reasoning. Okay. Now in reasoning, you have to go through the previous year papers and finally pick up all the subtopics from which questions are asked. For example, if you go through the five years papers, you will figure out that there are questions asked on direction. So the first subtopic is direction. Then you see that there was a question asked on blood relation. So the second subtopic becomes blood relation. Then you see there was a question asked on alphabetical uh, ordering. Okay, you have to fill, uh, fill in the alphabet which might come in the question mark section. Okay, so that becomes the third uh, subtopic. After doing this research, you will get a list of all the subtopics. According to my understanding, in any unit in paper one, there are somewhere around 10 to 15 subtopics. Okay, so the first day's job in any unit would be to get a syllabus of all the subtopics. Now, after that, you take two subtopics every day. So from the next day, you have to start preparing notes for two subtopics. Okay, suppose you took directions and blood relation. So it is going to take you 15 to 20 minutes to understand the basics of directions, how to attempt questions on directions, then the next 30 minutes you should involve in solving some 10 to 15 questions on directions and seeing where you are making mistakes. Once you have noticed the mistakes, make sure you make a uh, make a note of all these mistakes so that from the next time you don't make the same mistake. So if you do this job in one hour or so, you will complete one subtopic. So very simply, if you devote one hour to one subtopic, you can clearly make notes and also practice questions on that subtopic. The same applies to theory. For example, in research, variables becomes one subtopic. Okay, variables and types of variables. You take any book on paper one or you go to internet or you have if subscribed to any online course you go through the video or audio of that particular topic you make your own notes then you attempt questions on variables and see if you're getting them right if you're making mistakes you try to rectify those mistakes so very simply on the first day you have made a list of all the subtopics next day onwards you take two or three subtopics and in five days or six days very simply you will be able to complete all the subtopics once you complete all the subtopics you have completed that particular unit and finally on the seventh day you have to revise all the subtopics so that it gets into your long-term memory and finally do some practice questions uh, on all these topics 
total in total for example you can take two questions from direction two from uh, blood relations and accordingly solve a 50 or 100 questions paper so that you know how many questions you're getting it right so if you look at this plan first day somewhere around one to two hours you have to invest in order to go through all the previous year papers and make a list of all the subtopics then next five days you have to allocate two to three hours every day depending upon how many subtopics you are touching and on a final day you revise everything all the notes that you have made that is going to take one to two hours and then one hour you practice so if you give two hours on an average very easily you can complete one unit in one week and if you look at all the 10 units then very simply you can complete it in two and a half months so two hours time investment for next two and a half months can give you a very profound and a very simplistic preparation strategy for paper one now let's talk about paper two the first thing that you must understand before you begin your preparation for paper 2 is that the syllabus of any paper 2 is very vast when compared to paper 1 syllabus. The vastness of syllabus makes it very difficult to complete it. So the first thing that you must remember here is to know what you will be studying in the next 3 to 4 months. You cannot complete the entire syllabus if you are preparing for the first time in just 3 to 4 months. So you have to pick and choose choose the most important topics make sure that you make a list of all the topics that must be covered in paper 2 that you can do simply either by uh, going through the previous year papers or if you have the NTA syllabus you can even look at it for example in English literature the syllabus given by NTA is very brief so I have prepared a detailed syllabus for my students which is available free of cost on the website arpitakarva.com you can get that syllabus it is divided in 13 modules now if you look at the syllabus it's very huge the next thing that you have to do is to tick mark the sections that are the most important ones. For example, in case of English literature, British literature, theory and criticism, module 1, 6 and 7 are the most important modules from which you can expect 80% of the questions. So first thing you have to do is to put all your energy in completing this chunk. Make sure that you don't start in the ascending order. Most of the students do this mistake. Suppose your syllabus has 10 units. You will start from unit number one. Now you have to first see how many questions are asked from first unit. Maybe only four questions are asked from first unit and 25 questions are asked from seventh unit. So first do seventh unit and later you can do first unit. This is common sense that you have to apply. So make a syllabus, then pick and choose the topics as per the importance level and finally make a timetable for yourself make sure if you have five months in your hand in first three months you complete the most important topics first and while you are completing the topics don't just read them make your own proper concise notes which you can revise in the last one month I was preparing notes when I was preparing for UGC net and I prepared 12 I filled 12 notebooks now when I started revising them I used to take out the most important elements which I'm forgetting and put them in a separate copy so at the end there were 56 pages which I had to revise just one day before the exam so you keep on uh, making short notes as in when you revise so that at the end you have those few pages which you revise and you are done with the syllabus so make sure in the first three months you prop make proper notes and learn them in the fourth month you touch upon topics which are not so important but are easier okay which can get you those extra marks so in the fourth month you take some uh, tits and bits of topic for example research methodology was included in UGC net paper to English literature and it's a very short topic so you might take it in the fourth month with that you might also take of uh, some other topic for example literary movements and group it's a comparatively uh, small section which you can complete easily in one week okay so all these small small chunks which are easy and relatively small can be picked up in the fourth month and finally the fifth month should be for complete revision don't neglect revision even if you have three months in hand make sure you study for two months and revise in the last one month if you don't revise in the last one month whatever you've studied in the 
past few months you will not be able to answer those questions on the day of the exam what i studied today if i don't revise before the exam i will not remember it at all so revision is the key so if you follow this strategy and you use your common sense in picking and selecting the topic it becomes very easy or else you can even join some online course which can give you full fledged uh material so that you don't have to go here and there in order to gather material so that is what we do in our online course everything is given to you so that you just have to plug in your earphone listen to the lecture make quick notes and revise it you done you don't need to do a lot of uh research in gathering the material and then understanding and seeing what makes sense and what doesn't make sense we answer all those questions in just one place so make sure that you streamline your preparation and make a very simple basic plan this will i think going to work for the next net exam i wish you all the best for the upcoming net exam make sure that you listen to the three golden tips that i'm going to just give you so that you can see where that fits in your preparation and you can use the best out of it three golden tips that i would like to give you before i end this video are number 1 make sure you are consistent in your preparation i have seen a lot of students who would start as if they are going to complete the syllabus in one day but then that motivation doesn't last so why we need discipline because motivation doesn't last long you can be motivated one day but then you have to continue doing your preparation for the next 5 months so you need to have self discipline there was a very beautiful saying by warren buffett where he says that we don't need to be smarter than everyone else we just need to be more disciplined than everyone else so discipline is that magic power which can make you virtually unstoppable so make sure you are disciplined and consistent throughout your preparation journey second important thing whenever you want to remember theoretical information data facts make sure you study these things right before going to the bed so suppose you go to bed at 11 in the night make sure at 9 o'clock till 10:30 or 11 you study and learn the facts and figures that you want to memorize because when you sleep whatever you've studied in the last few hours is going to move into your subconscious mind so it is going to be retained far more than what you is go you are going to retain in the morning so even if you are a morning person make your notes in the morning but the retaining thing should happen in the night just before you sleep the third and the last tip that i would like to put across your table is that whenever you are making notes make sure they are concise don't write everything that is there in the textbook in your notebook then in that case your notebook and textbook will be similar you don't have to be a photocopy machine make concise notes only jot down points which are important and use bullet points rather than writing in paragraphs because our brain remembers the bullet points more than it remembers paragraphs so make sure that you write bullet points and concise notes suppose you are reading a page now you should not write more than 10% of what is written on the page so suppose you are reading a textbook there's a page which has 2000 words now out of these 2000 words you cannot write more than more than 200 words in your notebook that is what notes are so you can only reproduce 10% of what you have uh, read if you want to make proper notes so make sure you use that tip to save a lot of your time with that note i want to take your leave i hope these tips will help you to understand and strategize your preparation for upcoming net exam i wish you all the best from the entire team of arpitakarva.com that's it for this video lecture we'll meet soon in the next video lecture till the time we meet next happy learning keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com